back everyone to another episode of all about mechanics now today i'm going to be showing you spindle clutch 2 it's a tricky dungeon it's got a rather nasty middle boss and the last boss isn't too bad but i'm going to show you of course the veteran difficulty including the hard mode we're going to use the same setup as before with one tank one healer one stamina dps and one magicka dps making sure that no rolls are left out here we go now this dungeon is the same layout as the original one, so Spindle Clutch 1 and Spindle Clutch 2 have basically the same map. However, there is an extra room at the end, so we'll get to that when we get there, but that's where the last boss is. Just past where the spider was, you go through the door and he's there, but we'll show you. Anyway, the same kind of scenario as before, there's lots and lots of ads. You have to make sure, that, of course, that your tank is dead center if possible, pulling in everything to the middle so that you can burn most of them down with area of effect damage while focusing some of the larger stuff. Now, of course, the same as before, make sure that your DPS and your healers or whatever, if they're in range, can interrupt anything that is casting. If you see a red splash effect coming from the target, it can be interrupted, and it's normally a really nasty effect, whether it be a, a big AoE on the ground that they can fire, or perhaps maybe um, a take aim or a heal or something like that. You have to always make sure that you interrupt the targets, otherwise you can get in some trouble. Now remember, of course, some targets do have heavy attack mechanics. They will try and knock people down or uppercut them or anything like that. If it's on the tank, generally the tank should be okay, especially if they're blocking. But if not, and it's on you, don't run away. Bring the target to the tank and make sure you're blocking on the way so that you don't get knocked over. Same scenario here, lots and lots of ads. The sword and board guy is quite tough, so you want to focus him, but everything else should just be interrupted and killed with area of effect if possible. There's a lot of pulls like that, they're all very, very similar, but the ones you want to look out for especially are the sword and boards because they do have a lot more health and they have a nasty charge attack as well. Now this boss is very, very simple but can end badly. The middle guy there, he is the boss, so you want to make sure the tank taunts that right away and all of the adds obviously are quite low health in comparison to him. They die very, very quickly, but you need to pin them down. So your tank should hold the boss facing away from the group and try and pin as many of those adds as possible so you can kill them with area of effect. In the meantime, make sure you're focusing the boss and do not stand in front of his face if you're a DPS or a healer. He has a nasty frontal AoE, which is really, really small, but it's a really nasty, quick paced flurry, that one there. It'll hit you like four or five times in the face really, really quickly. If you're a tank, you must block it. If you're a DPS, do not stand in front of it. And if you are caught by it, you must block. He will occasionally jump in the air. When he does that, whoever the boss is on at the time, whether it be the tank, the DPS, or a healer, should be the tank, by the way, because he should be holding the taunt. Just make sure you block and you'll be fine. If you don't block, you're dead. Ultimately, it's a fairly fast boss, but the bases are pin the adds, burn them down with AoE, kill the boss. Just remember, do not stand in front of his face. No one should be standing in front of a boss anyway. The tanks usually turn them away from the group to make sure that they are defended, so the the boss hits the tank instead of the group, so just keep inside that habit. Don't start yolo one in front of the boss and wondering why you're dead, because it's going to be your fault. Another ad pull here. Just remember, again, there are going to be healers, there are going to be archers and stuff like that from range that are going to be cast in channeled effects. If you see any of those happening, just walk over to them and interrupt. That guy there, he's dead anyway, but he was going to get interrupted. And of course, there is a standard that the sword and board guy drops down. If you don't get rid of him quickly, he'll drop it on the ground and you really don't want to get caught inside of it. So kind of step out a bit or just make sure your healer's on point so that you don't get wrecked in the middle. It's a really confined space. It's a little bit tricky. Now, this is Blood Spawn. If you're familiar with old school DPS tests, before we had target dummies, you'll already know what this boss is all about. However, if not, don't worry, I'm going to explain it. He'll jump out from the sky in a moment, or from the ceiling if you like, and a tank should hold the boss completely still. All you need to do is hold him really, really still, and turn it away from the group. It's got a nasty flurry, just like the last boss, which can be blocked, and a really big heavy attack, which will knock the tank down or whoever gets caught by it. But periodically, of course, there will be situations where he will slam the ground, he'll put a nasty AoE around the room, and rocks will fall from the ceiling. Now, this will happen over and over and over throughout the fight. There's the slam. Now rocks will start falling down, and people will get hit. Now the rocks are falling around the outside of the room, so it's kind of closing the exits. But the longer the fight, the more kind of confined space you have, and the more likely you are to get wrecked by them. But basically, hold the, t hold the boss still, the tank should be blocking when the heavy attacks come and the rest of the time is pretty much safe. The boss doesn't try to target anybody in the room except for the tank if he is taunted, so you shouldn't have any issues here. However, like I said, the longer the fight goes on, the more aggressive it gets, the less space you have because rocks start filling the room. So you have to be very careful. Don't start running around the room like a headless chicken because if you do, you're going to get the rocks landing on your head because you're going to be too far away from the center. Stay very, very close. He doesn't have a lot of health. 
but especially if you're not if you've got two dps that are experienced but if they're not experienced it doesn't matter you can still kill him just hold him still and beat on him action arcs these are tricky make sure that you spin them around if you're the tank so that they don't face the group they've got a little bit of an aoe in front of them which is quite nasty and of course they have a knockdown which is from a heavy attack so you must make sure you block it at the same time, of course, there is a pull up here with lots of ads, lots of archers and stuff like that. So make sure you're on point with your interrupts while you're killing this dude. Or you can just completely separate him and drag him down the ramp so you don't have to fight them both at the same time. You don't do too much damage, but you can get overwhelmed with them if you don't kill the Atro quick enough because there's no damage on these little guys. The next boss is the Pug Killer. This is what will destroy pickup groups if you do not pay attention. Now this... Initially is a fight with all the bosses from Spindle Clutch 1. They are in kind of a ghost or spectre type form. So you see them in kind of a different light if you like. They have less health but they do have the same mechanics. So to start with of course you can't actually hit that boss walking up the stairs to the left. You can interact with him to do a tiny tiny bit of damage just to kind of start the fight. But you can't really kill him. And if you do try to you're going to do barely any damage. Now as soon as he goes red... His health bar will go red. His There you go. He's red now. The fight will start. Now, there's several phases. The first phase is loads and loads of spiders. If you've got claws or talons or some way of rooting the targets, pin them down as soon as you can as the tank and area of effect damage should do the job. Now, the second phase is one of the first bosses from Spindle Clutch. Grab the boss, turn it away from the group, and the DPS should focus on killing it while the healer keeps everybody up. It's very straightforward. It can be stunned over and over and over, so just be on it until it dies. Really, really simple stuff. Don't run around the room, it will not help you. The next phase is two bosses, in fact. This will be the Widowmaker and Rabu, which is the two mini bosses on the way halfway through Spindle Clutch 1. Pin them all in the middle as much as you possibly can, including the adds, because they do heal and they can be a real pain. And if you don't kill these fast enough, you will overlap the phases. But basically, the tank should hold them in the center, turn them away from the group, and you can kill them quite easily without too much pressure. If you let them go, it's going to get really messy. Last phase, bring the healers into the middle. This is the last boss from Spindle 1. Turn her away from the group and then just DPS her down as and when you can. Arrow of effect should get rid of the healers, but if they don't die fast enough, you are going to want to focus them because this is a little bit of a race. If you don't kill them quick enough, each phase will overlap and so will this next one. Now this is very tricky. Focus full time here. There is a trident effect there. You have to make sure you stay in the gaps. Don't let it hit you. If he hits someone direct with his um, channeled ability, you will have a Magicka Drain. And also, this effect here, this big circle, this is very important. If you are inside of that, it will move. Move with it. Do not touch the inside. If you are outside of it, stay away. If you are on the inside, stay in. If you're on the outside, stay out. If you touch it at all, it is a one-shot and you are dead. Once it's over... Carry on where you were. You can see that um, effect that he just hit the tank with. He put his hand in the air. There's a big white circle. That drains him. If anyone gets hit with that, they drain the resources, so you have to put in a lot of heavy attacks. Again, watch the trident on the floor. Stay out of the gaps. You'll stay in the gaps. You'll be fine. You can see at the back there, Christina's caught in the circle. She's inside the circle and moving with it. No matter what happens, you have to move with it. Do not touch the edges. You can see we're trying to get around it because if it touches us, we're dead also. Very, very simple stuff. Now the tank is turning the boss away from us, so the majority of the AoEs and the damage that is coming out of the floor and the boss's main attack should only really hit the tank, but it can go kind of sideways sometimes and go a different direction. If you're the tank, keep your block up when that happens. If you're not, then just stay ranged a little bit if it's coming towards you and get in the gaps. Key point, circle. If you're inside, stay inside. If you're outside, stay outside. That is a ring of death for a reason. Don't even try and dodge roller or corrosive armor. It doesn't work. You will die. Next phase, lots and lots of ads in this little cubby hole here. Really, really tricky. Make sure the tank obviously pins everything down as much as possible while you interrupt the range. There's a couple sneaky archers and healers in the back, so you have to make sure you grab those as quick as possible. The next room has some more ads, as you'd expect. As you can see again, the sword and board is the tricky one. He has the most health and he drops a banner. Always get him down. The next room has a quick ad pull and then a boss. The boss is actually three bosses. It's three Atronarchs. Now the trick to these is they are based off of um, their health. So if one goes down, the other two get stronger. And then if the next one goes down, the last one gets stronger. So you've got two options. You can either kill them and just stagger the effect. So every time one goes down, the other one gets more health. You just, you just gradually kill them. That's fine. 
or you can balance your damage and do as much area of effect as possible while not necessarily focusing any particular target. If you do that, you can kill them all at exactly the same time. There's a very small window of opportunity to do so. But basically all you need to do as far as a tank is concerned is grab all three, turn them away from the group and keep your taunts and blocks up. They have some pretty strong heavy attacks but if you are a tank and you are blocking it, it won't do too much damage. Even on a DPS you can actually block it and mitigate quite a bit of it. But as you can see here, uh, Looney has turned all three away from us, except for that one. No, there you go, now he's got them all. And we just evenly spread our damage. As a DK, especially this one, I've got a lot of single target damage with decent AoE. So what I've done is I've put my dots down on the floor, so they're all getting hit evenly. And then I'm just kind of individually dotting each one as I go. That way they're all fairly um, similar in terms of how much damage they take. Nothing's really pushed over the edge. You see they're all going down, the middle one is going to die first. Now, if you see the right one and the left one got stronger. That's what happens if you don't kill them all quick enough. So you have to balance your damage out. It's very tricky. But it's not the end of the world. They do enrage a bit. They do hit a bit harder. But if you burn the next one down, you'll see that another one gets even stronger. Now, he's going to die anyway, so we don't get to that far. But if we'd have left him alive for more than a couple of seconds, he would have got stronger again. Either way, it's not game changing. However you're more comfortable, just pace the fight, it's entirely up to you. But if you can kill them all at the same time, then go for it, because they can all drop at exactly the same second if you balance your damage. Now, another Atronarch here. You must make sure that you, of course, if you're the tank, turn this away from the group, because his little frontal AoE is quite nasty. You don't want to get hit by it. And, of course, his heavy attack can knock people down, so keep him facing away from the group. Key point as a tank, always turn stuff away from the group. We don't want to be in the face of it. You're the one with the shield. Here is a bit tricky, big, big AoE opportunity, but make sure you focus the sword and board, of course, because they have the most health and they drop banners. However, again, watch out for the ranged and the healers. The tank is obviously going to try and pull them in, but they have resources just like you do and they get spent. So you have to make sure that you just give them a chance to pull stuff in. In the meantime, interrupt if you have to. Another nasty corner pull in the middle of a corridor. Again, be very, very careful here. Interrupt the ranged stuff if they start doing anything stupid. Make sure that you keep as much area of effect damage down as possible and heals if you're a healer, of course. The tank should make sure they focus as many things as possible while pinning down the targets and, of course, make sure you taunt that sword and board. Any sword and boards or two-handers have to be taunted ASAP. You can grab the archers and the healers at any time. They're not going to be that bad to deal with, especially if the group is on interrupts. But if you don't grab those sword and boards and two-handers, if there are any, they will heavy attack the group and they will kill them. So you have to be very, very careful. Again, another Atronarch, stay out of his face, let the tank turn it around and you should be just fine. It's inevitable that this dude's going to die, he doesn't really enrage or anything like the ones in Imperial City Prison, which will come later, don't worry. So, it's a very uh, easy paced kill every time you see one of those. They're not really that dangerous, at least if you stay out of their face anyway. Now this next pull, again, tank in the middle, pin everything down and pull all the range stuff in. Remember as DPS and healers, you should be keeping on those interrupts. There are a few casters in here, there's a healer or so as well, so you need to be really, really careful. Most of the AoE should do the job, but again, sword and board targets have a lot more health and they drop banners, so you want to get rid of them really quickly if you can. The next room has a very unusual boss. He has four adds to start with, which you need to burn down with AoE if you can. Hopefully the tank can target them. After this Atronach, that is. But we'll talk about the boss anyway. And of course, the main boss himself has a really nasty heavy attack. You've got to make sure you block him. The DPS and the healer should not be running around the room. There's no need for it. So just focus on where you're standing and don't stand in his face. However, there is a banner that comes from this boss as well. So if that does land, make sure everybody gets out of it. Except for, of course, the tank. You can either position the boss inside of it with heals or you can just step out of it and uh, move him to one side. But on approach, of course, make sure your tank goes first. If a DPS goes first, those red archers to the side there, to either side of him, are going to kill you. They hit really, really hard. They don't have a lot of health, but you do need to make sure that you focus them above the boss. Don't go weighing into the boss first of all. Get rid of those adds as soon as possible. The boss isn't that hard. He's only got 2.1 million health, but you do have to make sure, of course, you pay attention to the mechanics, otherwise you are going to get in trouble. So first of all, focus the adds down. You can see that I'm obviously trying to grab as many as possible with a couple dots on each one. The boss will take passive damage from AoE anyway, but you can see the group are focusing on that um, ad before it goes down. There's the banner, by the way. That's not a friendly one. That's a negative one. Really nasty. Mine is in the middle, but he's got one as well, so you have to be very, very careful of that. Now, he's gone into the ground. Anyone caught in that circle will take damage and he will heal. Now, if the tank holds really, really still and just holds block, 
he doesn't heal that much and when he comes up he will hit with a massive heavy attack so if you're the DPS or the tank or even a healer and you know that that boss is on you when he's doing that make sure you hold block keep heals coming in and make sure you stay on block until he comes back up one more thing to note by the way he will block himself sometimes if he does that don't heavy attack him with a melee weapon because you'll bounce off it and go off balance so he's gone into the ground again he can't take any damage the tank is just holding block. You see, obviously, the boss's health has gone up very, very slowly because he's mitigating the majority of the damage. Comes out, there's a banner, there's a heavy attack. Just make sure they block and you're fine. Basically, when he's in the ground, stay still, hold block. If it's on a DPS, you can move very slowly in a circle to keep away from him if you want, but generally you should be fine as long as you hold block and you receive heals. The danger is if you let go of block, you take additional damage and he heals more the more damage he does. Key point, however, when he gets back up, he instantly heavy attacks and it really, really hurts. So you have to be very, very careful. Now remember at the very beginning of the video, I said there's an extra room. This is the extra room. So you go through the door, you come through here, and this is where the last boss is. Now, hard mode on this doesn't need to be activated via a scroll. If you look around the room, you can see loads of sacrifices on crosses. Now the boss will try to heal from those. Basically, the hard mode is if one of those dies, you fail. If one of them doesn't die and they all survive, you pass hard mode. Honestly, I think this needs a bit of a buff because I've never seen one of them die. I've never seen anyone even try to kill them. And we basically just go through the mechanics and it's inevitable that you're going to do it. But there are some things that can mess you up. So we're going to go over it, of course. He does have a fair bit of health for a boss. got 5.7, which is pretty good for a dungeon. But um, basically, get your tank to hold him still and everyone should kind of find their own place around him. Stay very, very still. When he raises his hand to mid-height, he'll do that. Put a nasty blood type AOE dot on the ground. Tanks can usually stand inside of it, but you don't really have to. But if it's a DPS, you need to step out of it. Now, this phase here, he is trying to channel kind of health from the sacrifice. You can see it's aiming at the one to the right. He is healing at this phase, but as long as you keep your damage up, you should be just fine. Remember the mid-height hand? That's the blood on the floor. Now he's going to go high height, hand in the air. When that happens, everyone must block. He'll jump from one target to the next, to the next, to the next, giving him a nasty hit, and then he'll go back to the person that is aggroed, should be the tank. When that happens, again, you don't need to move around the room, just block and carry on. Mid-height hand, blood on the floor, step out. Very, very simple. High hand, block. Everybody blocks. Back to normal. Carry on burning. Keep doing what you're doing. That's all he really does. He does try and take um, health off the targets with like a soul siphon type ability, but it doesn't really do that much damage. The tank is of course in the AoE, but the tank is built to take damage anyway, so he's fine. Here he goes again. He's going to try and siphon from the, the sacrifices to this time, so he takes an even bigger heal. But as long as you keep your damage up, you're fine. Keep an eye on his hand. He's going to go mid-height again. There's the AoE on the ground. Tank can either take it or stand out. Hand is high. Block. At this phase, or at this stage rather, it's rinse repeat. All you have to do is keep repeating that. Stay out of the juice, block the teleport strike, carry on. Another AOE on the ground, step out of it, carry on. You have no reason to run around the room at all. Very, very simple boss. In fact, possibly one of the easiest hard modes in the game. Block, and carry on. And there we go. So hopefully that helped, hopefully that wasn't too boring, and hopefully you now understand how to tackle Spindle Clutch 2. It is quite nasty, the last boss is okay, but the mid one, the ghost, is a nightmare. So you have to make sure you're very, very up to date with what you should and shouldn't be doing as far as mechanics are concerned. Pay very close attention to that ring of death, otherwise you are going to die. Anyway, thank you all very, very much for watching, I fully appreciate the support, and if you are not subscribing, please do hit that button, it is free. Furthermore, if you'd like to support the channel outside of YouTube, there are some links in the description for Patreon, Twitter, Facebook, the website zynodegaming.com, and of course my Twitch page, where I'm now doing live streams 10pm every day, UK time. Once again, thank you all very, very much for watching, and bye-bye.